Hello learners, today we are going to begin with the prose lesson The 100 Dresses written by L. Sor Esther prescribed in your NCERT syllabus. The story is divided into two parts. So today we are going to begin with part one of this story. Let's quickly take a look at the contents of this video. First, I'll give you a brief introduction to the story and to the author. After this, we will read the story and I explain it line by line along with the difficult words and their meanings. Finally, we'll analyze the story and its major themes. Okay, so let's begin. Elpsor Esther is an American author. She moved from Poland to America at a very small age. She is famous for writing children's stories. She wrote this story, A Hundred Dresses, in the year 1994. Let me tell you some of the things about the story. This story highlights the struggles and discrimination faced by the Polish immigrants to America. So before I explain what the struggles and discrimination that these people faced, let us discuss who these Polish immigrants were and why they moved to America. Polish people fled after Polish independence in three waves to America from Germany, Russia and Austria in search for better jobs, money and to escape the communist government in Poland. So Poland is basically a very small country. It is located exactly in the middle of the European continent. This country is a very small country surrounded by seven other huge countries, right, such as Germany. So whenever any of the wars took place, uh, for example, World War One, World War Two, whenever these wars took place, this country was the worst hit because it uh, lied uh, in the middle of all these huge countries who used to go to war with, with each other. This country was the worst affected country and uh, the people who lived in Poland were the worst affected. So they used to move out in uh, huge groups uh, from Poland to different parts of the world. They uh, mainly moved to America and Canada and other such countries in which they saw better job prospects because in their country everything was destroyed by war. So they tried, they tried to move into these countries in search of jobs and money. Right? So uh, that's why we are saying uh, Polish immigrants and uh, this story highlights the struggles, the problems that these people faced when they came to America and other such countries, the discrimination they faced, uh, how people considered them different and how they were treated badly by these people on account of being different. Uh, there were stereotypes about uh, the dressing style, the names, the culture and the work ethics of uh, Polish people. Everybody used to think that they have a weird dressing style because obviously they were not very rich people. They moved in search of money, in search of jobs. Uh, they used to do very odd sort of jobs in America. So that's why uh, people had these notions about them that they were poor that they did not have a good dressing style that their names were weird that their culture is uh, different and uh, they brought their culture with them and they did not want to be assimilated in the american culture uh, people had these stereotypes stereotypes are uh, the pre-decided notions that you have about anybody right so people used to think all of these things about uh, these people who moved from Poland to America and these stereotypes which people had uh, caused them to discriminate against uh, pe the Polish people, right? So uh, the main character is a little girl in the story. Her name is Wanda Petronsky and uh, her classmates think that her dressing style is bad, uh, that her name is weird, that the culture that she comes from is different from theirs. So that's why she is discriminated against. We will just see how she is discriminated against. But uh, this is the uh, major theme of the story that we'll uh, read about. Okay, so let's move straight into the story. Today, Monday, Wanda Petronsky was not in her seat, but nobody, not even Peggy and Madeline, the girls who started all the fun, noticed her absence. So, uh, today is Monday, our little protagonist called Wanda Petronsky, she is not in her seat and even the two other girls, Peggy and Madeline, who is also called Maddie throughout the story, so Peggy and Maddie, even they did not notice uh, that the little girl is missing from her seat and these were the two girls who started all the fun right we will discuss what this fun means later in the story but even they did uh, even they don't notice that this little girl is not in her seat usually wanda sat in the seat next to the last seat in the last row in 
room 13. So they all used to sit in room 13, but Wanda sat in the last row in one corner, right? She sat in the corner of the room where the rough boys who did not make good marks sat. The corner of the room where there was most scuffling of feet, most roars of laughter when anything funny was said, and most mud and dirt on the floor. So this part of the room used to be the dirtiest and uh, boys used to sit here the boys who used to fight all day and uh, there was scuffling of feet uh, they used to produce a weird sort of noise from their uh, using their feet and they used to laugh roar loudly whenever anything funny was said so Wanda used to sit in this corner of the room Wanda did not sit there because she was rough and noisy she was not rough or noisy at all like the boys. On the contrary, she was very quiet and rarely said anything at all. So this girl was very, very quiet and she never used to say anything. She used to stay silent. And anybody had ever heard her laugh out loud. Sometimes she twisted her mouth into a crooked sort of smile, but that was all. So she never laughed at all. Crooked means bent, not straight. So she used to bend her mouth uh, in a uh, in a crooked fashion, but she never laughed uh, laughed out loud in front of everybody. Nobody knew exactly why Wanda sat in that seat, unless it was because she came all the way from Boggins Heights and her feet were usually caked with dry mud. But no one really thought much about Wanda Petronsky once she sat in the corner of the room. So uh, the author says that nobody actually bothered about her. Nobody knew why she sat in that corner. And uh, the author takes a guess. Maybe she came from Boggins Heights. This is the name of the place where she comes from. So maybe because she lives there, maybe she um, it's the reason why she sits in the corner. But nobody bothers about her, right? And maybe she used to have uh, mud on her feet, uh, on her shoes. Maybe that's why. The time when they thought about Wanda was outside of school hours, at noon time, when they were coming back to school or in the morning early before the school began, when groups of two or three or even more would be talking and laughing on their way to the schoolyard. So they did not bother about Wanda at all. They did not uh, remember that Wanda even existed. The only time these people noticed that Wanda was absent was in the afternoon when they were going back from school or in the morning when they were coming to the school right, before school right then sometimes they waited for Wanda sometimes they also used to wait for Wanda before school and after school to have fun with her so these girls just wanted to have fun with her the next day Tuesday Wanda was not in school either and nobody noticed her absence again so she did not turn up on Monday neither on Tuesday but on Wednesday Peggy and Maddie who sat down front with other children who got good marks and who didn't track in a whole lot of mud did notice that Wanda wasn't there. So uh, on Wednesday they finally noticed that Wanda was not there in her seat and uh, Peggy and Maddie both used to sit in the front of the class and uh, all the other people who sat in the front rows got the best marks in their class and they did not uh, have a lot of mud on their shoes so they were different peggy was the most popular girl in the school she was pretty she has uh, she had many pretty clothes and her hair was curly so the author has described peggy as a very beautiful girl she used to wear pretty clothes and she had curly hair and she was a very popular girl Maddie was her closest friend. Madeline or Maddie was her closest friend. The reason Peggy and Maddie noticed Wanda's absence was because Wanda had made them late to school. So Wanda, who is not present today, on Wednesday, had made them late for school. How so? They had waited and waited for Wanda to have some fun with her and she just hadn't come. They often waited for Wanda Petronsky to have fun with her. So they just wanted to have a little fun with her but Wanda did not come. So that's why they got late waiting for her. Wanda Petronsky. Most of the children in room 13 did not have names like that. They had names easy to say like Thomas, Smith or Alan. There was one boy named Bounce. Willie Bounce and people thought that was funny but not funny in the same way Petronsky was. So uh, the author says that Wanda Petronsky, what a weird name. Mostly people had such simple names like Smith or Alan. Nobody had such a name. Her name was really funny and it was a, a different kind of a funny, not funny like Willie Bounce. Willie Bounce was funny because, you know, bounce is a funny word. You know, bouncing means to jump up and down. But Wanda Petronsky's name was weird in a way. So that is why it is funny because it is weird. It is strange to other people. 
Wanda didn't have any friends. She came to school alone and went home alone. So she's a loner. She comes alone, goes alone. She does not smile at all. She sits in one corner. She doesn't talk to anybody. She's like that. She always wore a faded blue dress that didn't hang right. So it did not fit her well. She always used uh, used to wear a faded blue dress which did not fit her well. It was clean but it looked as, as though it had never been ironed properly. She didn't have any friends but a lot of girls talked to her. Sometimes they surrounded her in the schoolyard as she stood watching little girls play hopscotch on the worn hard ground. So she did not have any friends but a lot of girls used to talk to her and uh, she wore that dress which looked as if it had not been ironed properly. Right? Wanda Peggy, Peggy would say in most courteous manner as though she were talking to Miss Mason. Wanda she'd say giving one of her friends a nudge. Tell us, how many dresses did you say you had hung up in your closet? So Peggy used to ask her this one question, Wanda, and she would talk in a courteous tone. Courteous means when you are, uh, you know, talking in a respectful manner. So uh, she would talk in a mock respectful tone, uh, tone, right? She's not actually paying any respect to her. She's not talking to her properly, but she's just mocking her. And she asks her the same question. Uh, how many dresses are there in your closet? A hundred, Wanda would say. So Wanda would answer, I have a hundred dresses. A hundred? exclaimed all the little girls. So all the little girls would get very excited and they would say, Oh, you own a hundred dress? Uh, they would ex exclaim incredulously. Uh, incredulously. Incredulously means uh, they could not believe what she was saying. And the little ones would stop playing hopscotch and listen. So even the little girls would start listening to her. Yeah, a hundred. All lined up said Wanda. So Wanda would just uh, uh, say one sentence and stop. Yeah, a hundred and they are all lined up in my cupboard. Then her thin lips drew together in silence and then she would just purse her lips, put her lips together and be silent. What are they like? All silk, I bet, said Peggy. So she would ask one more question. What are, oh, uh, one more question. What are your dresses like? Are they made, made of silk? Yeah, all silk, all colors. Velvet too? Yeah, velvet too. A hundred dresses. So she would repeat that she has a hundred dresses. Wanda would repeat stolidly. Stolidly means without any expressions. So she would repeat it as if she was a robot, right? All lined up in my closet. So she would say, I have a hundred dresses, all are lined up in my closet, and I have different colors of dresses. She would say the same thing, right? Uh, then they'd let her go. And then before she'd gone very far, they couldn't help bursting into shrieks and peals of laughter. So they would start screaming with laughter. They would laugh so hard and Wanda could hear them, right? Because she's not even gone far away, right? A hundred dresses? Obviously, the only dress Wanda had was a blue one she wore every day. So why did she say she had a hundred? What a story. Everybody knew that Wanda was lying. But... They wondered why she was lying like that. How many shoes did you say you had? So now uh, they are asking her another question. 60 pairs all lined up in my closet. So uh, she answers in a similar manner. She says, I have 60 pairs of shoes all lined up in my closet. Cries of exaggerated politeness greeted this. All alike. So everybody is exaggerating. Exaggerating is uh, when you are trying to make something bigger than it actually is. So everybody is exaggerating politeness. Nobody is being polite to her. They are exaggerating as if they are pretending to be more polite than they actually are. Right? Oh no. Every pair is different. All colors. All lined up. So uh, they are asking her questions like how many shoes do you have? Are all of them uh, the, the same? Uh, but she answers in a similar manner. She says, no, every pair is different, all lined up, all colors. She gives them a similar answer for the dresses as well, right? Peggy, who had thought up this game, and Maddie, her inseparable friend, were always the last to leave. Finally, Wanda would move up the street, her eyes dull and her mouth closed, hitching her left shoulder every now and then in the funny way she had, finishing the walk to school alone. So Peggy had thought up of this game in the first place and Maddie was her best friend. They were inseparable. They could not be separated at all. So they were the f uh, last people to leave. They used to make fun of her till the very end. And finally, Wanda would start moving and she used to hitch her shoulder, move her shoulder in a weird manner. And everybody used to find that funny. So she would walk alone to the school. 
Peggy was not really cruel. She protected small children from bullies and she cried for hours if she saw an animal mistreated. If anybody had said to her, don't you think that's a cruel way to treat Wanda? She would have been very surprised. Cruel? Why did the girl say she had a hundred dresses? Anybody could tell that that was a lie. Why did she want to lie? And she wasn't just an ordinary person. Else, why did she have a name like that? Anyway, they never made her cry. So the author says that Peggy was not a cruel person. She used to feel bad for animals or the kids who were tortured or bullied in school, right? And she thinks that Wanda deserves this treatment. Why? Because first thing, she has a weird name. Anybody with that name cannot be ordinary for her. Second thing, she never made her cry. And if uh, she's not saying anything to make her cry, then she's right. And third thing is that she believes that Wanda is a liar and if she is lying then she deserves this treatment. As for Maddie, this business of asking Wanda every day how many dresses and how many hats and how many this and that she had was bothering her. So as for Maddie who was her best friend, it was bothering her. She did not like it that much. Maddie was poor herself. She usually wore somebody's hand-me-down clothes. Thank goodness she didn't live up live up on Boggins Heights or have a funny name. So Maddie was very poor herself. She used to wear secondhand clothes herself, right? But she's glad that she did not live in the place that Wanda lives or she did not have a funny name like Wanda has. Sometimes when Peggy was asking Wanda those questions in that mocking polite voice, Maddie felt embarrassed. So she felt bad. She felt bad and what did she used to do? Uh, Maddie felt embarrassed and studied the marbles in the palm of her hand. So she used to look closely at the marbles in her hand, rolling them around and saying nothing herself. So she did not participate because she did not like it. She did not like how they made fun of the little girl. Not that she felt sorry for Wanda. So she did not feel sorry or bad for Wanda at all. That was not the reason. She would have never paid any attention to Wanda if Peggy hadn't invented the dress game. But suppose Peggy and all the others started in on her next? She wasn't as poor as Wanda, perhaps, but she was poor. Of course, she would have more sense than to say she had a hundred dresses. Uh, still, she would not like her for them to begin on her. She wished Peggy would stop teasing Wanda Petronsky. So she knows that uh, she is also poor just like Wanda. But she's very scared that if she says anything to them, they will start teasing her as well. Maybe they will ask her about her dresses. And she feels that she's not stupid like Wanda. She will probably not lie like Wanda did. But she's scared of being their next target, right? Today, even though they had been late to school, Maddie was glad she had not had to make fun of Wanda. She worked her arithmetic problems absent-mindedly. So she's absent-minded. She's not paying any attention. She was glad that Wanda did not come. And uh, had she come, they would have made, her fu made fun of her, right? So she's very glad that she did not come. Eight times eight, let's see. Uh, she wished she had the nerve to write Peggy a note. She wanted, had the nerve means, had the courage to write Peggy a note. She wanted to write a note to Peggy because she knew she never would have the courage to speak right out to Peggy. She knew, knows that she does not have the uh, courage to speak directly to Peggy to say, Hey Peg, let's stop asking Wanda how many dresses she has. When she finished her arithmetic, she did start a note to Peggy. So she finally starts to write a note to Peggy because she knows that she will not be able to face Peggy directly suddenly she paused and shuddered so shuddered means to, she just got uh, shivered a little right and she sh uh, shuddered at the idea that oh my god what will happen if i write a note to her she pictured herself in the schoolyard a new target for peggy and the girls Peggy might ask her where she got the dress that she had on and Maddie would have to say it was one of Peggy's old ones that Maddie's mother had tried to disguise with the new trimmings so no one in room 13 would recognize it, right? So Maddie herself is really poor and she knows that the dress she is wearing right now is Peggy's second hand dress and her mother had uh, hid uh, the, the dress with uh, lace trimmings, new trimmings so that nobody would recognize that dress. So she knows that she can become the next target. She's very scared. If only Peggy would decide of her own accord to stop having fun with Wanda. Oh well, Maddie ran her hand through her short blonde hair as though to push the uncomfortable thoughts away. What difference did it make? Slowly, Maddie tore it into bits, the note she had started. 
She was Peggy's best friend and Peggy was the best liked girl in the whole room. Peggy could not possibly do anything that was really wrong, she thought. So, uh, she is Peggy's best friend and uh, she is just praying that Peggy would just stop doing it on her own. And she thinks that it does not make any difference. Even if she says it to Peggy, it does not make any difference. So, uh, she feels that Peggy cannot do anything wrong, really. As for Wanda, she was just some girl who lived up on Boggin Heights and she stood alone in the schoolyard. She scarcely ever said anything to anybody. The only time she talked was in the schoolyard about her hundred dresses. Maddie remembered her telling about one of her dresses, pale blue with colored trimmings. And she remembered another that was brilliant jungle green with a red sash. You'd look like a Christmas tree in that, the girls had said in a pretended admiration. So, uh, Mad Maddie remembers how they used to is Wanda and uh, she remembers Wanda as just another girl. She's not paying any attention to Wanda at all. She feels that uh, Wanda is just another girl who lives up on Boggin Heights and she doesn't speak to anybody only. Uh, she speaks only when she has to. Uh, she's forced to tell them that she has a hundred dresses all of different colors, right? She also remembers the details of two different dresses that uh, she has uh, described. She, who she? Wanda has described, right? Thinking about Wanda and her hundred dresses all lined up in the closet, Maddie began to wonder who was going to win the drawing and colouring contest. So there was a drawing and colouring contest and Maddie is wondering who is going to win the contest. For girls, this contest consisted of designing dresses and for boys, of designing motorboats. So boys had to design a motorboat and girls had to design a dress. Probably Peggy would draw or would win the girls medal. Peggy drew better than anyone else in the room. At least, that's what everybody thought. So, uh, of course, that's what Maddie thinks because Maddie is her best friend. So, she thinks that Peggy is the best artist in the room and she thinks that Peggy would definitely win. She could copy a picture in the magazine or some film star's head so that you could almost tell who it was. Oh, Maddie was sure Peggy would win. So, Maggie is rooting for Peggy. She is very sure that Peggy is going to win the contest. Oh, Maggie would show, uh, was sure Peggy would win. Well, tomorrow the teacher was going to announce the winners. Then they would know. So, she thought that Peggy is going to win uh, the contest. The next day it was drizzling. Drizzling means raining very lightly. Maddie and Peggy hurried to school under Peggy's umbrella. Naturally, on a day like this, they did not wait for Wanda. On the corner of Olive Street, the street that far, far away under the railroad tracks and up the hill led to Boggins Heights. So all of this tells that tells us that Boggins Heights is really far away, right? Uh, because uh, you have to go through the Oliver Street, you have to cross the Oliver Street far, far away under the railroad tracks and up the hill. So uh, it, this place uh, from where Wanda comes to school, it's really far away, right? They weren't taking chances on being late today because today was important. So today it was raining and it was, a, it was an important day because the results of the painting and drawing competition were going to be announced. So they did not want to be late. Do you think Miss Mason will announce the winners today? Day, asked Peggy. Oh, I hope so. The minute we get in, said Maddie. Of course you'll win, Peg. Hope so, said Peggy eagerly. So Peggy also wanted to win and Maddie is very sure that Peggy is going to win. The minute they entered the classroom, they stopped short and gasped. So they stopped short means they just uh, were very surprised and they gasped. Gasp means to, when you just uh, kind of take a deep breath uh, there were drawings all over the room, on every ledge and windowsill, dazzling colours and brilliant, lavish designs. Lavish means exquisite uh, designs, very extraordinary designs, uh, uh, all drawn on great sheets of wrapping paper. There must have been a hundred of them, all lined up. So there were a lot of designs all lined up one next to the other and they were beautiful on every ledge, every windowsill, everywhere. These must be the drawings for the contest. They were. Everybody stopped and whistled or murmured admiringly. So everybody was admiring the dresses. Some were whistling also because these dresses were so well made. These portraits of the dresses were very well made. As soon as the class had assembled, Miss Mason announced the winners. So, uh, Miss Mason is the teacher. She announces the winners. Jack Beggles had won for the boys, she said, and his design for the outboard motor was on exhibition in room 12, along with the sketches by all the other boys. So, along with the other sketches, his uh, sketch had uh, been displayed in room number 12 and he had won the 
motor boat designing contest as for the girls she said although just one or two sketches were submitted by most one girl and room 13 should be proud of her this one girl actually drew 100 designs all different and all beautiful in the opinion of the judges any one of the drawings is worthy of winning the prize i am very happy to say that wanda petronsky is the winner of the girls is medal so as for the girls she says that uh, there is one girl from room 13 who made not one or two but a hundred dresses hundred sketches and all of these were beautiful and uh, the judges thought that any one of the her drawings is worthy of winning a prize so that girl is wanda petronsky and she had won the competition unfortunately wanda has been absent from school for some days and is not here to receive the applause uh, the clapping right that is due to her let us hope she will be back tomorrow now class you may file round the room quietly and look at her exquisite drawings the beautiful drawings you can lo- look at her beautiful drawings right the children burst into applause so they started to clap for her and even the boys were glad to have a chance to stamp on the floor so they were stamping on the floor uh, putting their feet on the floor with f- uh, force right put their fingers on their mouths and whistle they were whistling they were stomping their feet they were screaming and they were applauding uh, wanda who was who was not even there uh, not even there in the classroom right though they were not interested in the dresses look peg whispered maddy there's that blue one she told us about isn't that beautiful yes said peggy and there's that green one boy and i thought only i could draw so both these girls are really surprised looking at the dresses and they are discussing how uh, this little girl wanda told them about her dresses and look at all of these dresses she indeed had made 100 dresses so she probably wasn't lying she had 100 dresses right okay so now that we've discussed the story let's look at the main themes of the story themes are the major ideas around which a story revolves there are three major themes in this story the first one is stereotyping like i told you it is the act of creating a set of opinion or images of, of a person since wanda is poor her classmates expect her to have no dresses they're also a surprise to find out that she can sketch so well right so stereotyping means to create a certain idea about a person and whenever we do that if that person tries to be anything other than that image if that person tries to move out of that image uh, we put her put them down right because we try to fit everybody into the st- same stereotypes whenever we think about a person from the west the person from the western countries we tend to think that uh, they are not traditional they don't know any rituals or anything like that right whenever we say that we try to bind the other person into a set of criteria and we judge uh, them accordingly we judge them according to that whenever they try to do anything different from our uh, opinions we label them and we call them out so that's how stereotyping is very harmful so all of these people her classmates thought that wanda was very poor so therefore she was talentless she did not have any talent and she was good for nothing but she proved all of them wrong and she proved that stereotyping her as the poor worthless girl was wrong second is discrimination so discrimination is something which stems from stereotyping if you stereotype somebody then only you can discriminate against them because you already have an idea about how that person should be and if they are uh, different from that idea of yours you discriminate them you do Uh, uh you do you you do bad things to them right uh, you consider them different from you when people do not fit into the stereotypes they are discriminated against so wanda is bullied for her different name because her name was different her dressing style because she used to wear the same dress unlike peggy who had a lot of dresses to wear and her poor status she used to live very very far away and she had mud on her shoes probably because she used to walk a long way to school this discrimination stems from her being different from her peers from her classmates she was different from them that's why they used to discriminate against her they uh, used to treat her badly that that is called discrimination third is bullying bullying is uh, very similar to discrimination um the girls make fun of wanda's dressing sense by asking her the same question and laughing at her so although the author says that peggy was a uh, soft-hearted and not cruel and she would feel bad if anybody told her that she teased 
uh, Wanda, but we know for a fact that she bullied Wanda by asking her the same question every day. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching.